All right, so starting off with today, we're going to look into how to determine how many uh, covalent bonds uh, an atom will form if it's following the octet rule. So octet, oct, means eight. Generally, we're talking about covalent bonds. So we're only talking about nonmetals. So we're looking at having the outer shell look like it has eight outer shell electrons. So any electron that it's sharing with another atom, chances are that atom's sharing an electron with it. Um, so that's kind of how it looks like it has that extra electron is because it's being shared with it. Um, so for instance, if we're looking at the one we're going to use time and time again, if we're looking at oxygen, um, hoping that kind of shows up. Maybe we'll write a little bit lower. Get rid of that glare a little bit more. If I'm looking at oxygen, uh, we're going to give it, it's in column six, so six outer shell electrons. One, two, three, four. This is where that clock method gets to be really, really important. Five and six. So now to figure out just how many bonds it will form, any unpaired electron, you know, using the clock method, um, any unpaired electron then will form a bond. So oxygen has those two unpaired electrons. Oxygen will form two bonds. If I'm looking at something like chlorine, it's in column seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Chlorine has one unpaired electron. The other electrons are already paired up. Chlorine will form one bond. Uh, if we're looking at nitrogen, move over this way. Nitrogen, column five, five outer shell electrons. One, two, three, four, five. Nitrogen has one pair of electron, uh, electrons, three unpaired electrons, three bonds. Figuring out the number of bonds these things form is pretty easy and straightforward. Now, keep in mind, out of those three bonds, the way that nitrogen could bond with other things, nitrogen could form a triple bond with something, it could form a double bond with one thing, give it pairs of electrons there, nitrogen could form a double bond with one thing, a single bond with another one. Not for sure if that one's showing up in the video at all. Looks like it might be. These bonds can appear, you know, so long as there, there's two bonds. So for oxygen of those two bonds, each bond could be going to a separate thing, or they can both be going to the same thing it's bonded to. Chlorine only has the one option. Chlorine can only form single bonds, you know, if we're following the octet rule. Um, we're going to go into bond order and stuff uh, in the next video. I just wanted this one to kind of give us a good basis as to figuring out how many bonds these things form. You draw the Lewis structure. Any electron that's not paired up after you do the clock method, any unpaired electron then will form a covalent bond. It, it will go out and share, uh, partner up with an electron from another atom. Because of quantum physics, stuff like that, these two electrons can't just pair up. It would leave an empty room, and for whatever quantum physics reason, we can't have that. So, so just know, one, two, three, four, double up, five, six two unpaired electrons, each one will form a bond. Uh, that's how you figure out how many bonds these things form.